Hey YouTube, what is going on? It's Huncho here, back with another video. Today's video is going to be focusing on lowering your input delay on keyboard and mouse. Some of these things are going to be system latency based, while others will be focused more on the keyboard and mouse specifically. If you're not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. So our first step is going to be timer resolution. If you have less than 16 gigabytes of RAM, you can check this in your task manager under RAM to see how much you have. If you have less than 16, then I definitely recommend using ISLC. The intelligent standby list cleaner will look like this when you open it. So even if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM like I do, but I don't run anything in the background while I'm playing, but if you're the type of person that plays with like Discord open and you're talking to your friends and you got Spotify running, your standby list will add up here. So at that point, I would highly recommend using this instead of using just the timer resolution. But if you don't run anything besides Fortnite, just use timer resolution because it's an unneeded program running in the background. So our settings for this are gonna be start minimized and auto start monitoring. Set your free memory as half of your total RAM. So with 16 gigabytes of RAM, I'd set it at eight. With eight, you'd set it to four. You can keep the list size at this. Set the timer resolution to 0.5. Check enabled custom timer resolution. Set the polling rate all the way to the highest value of 10,000. This will have the least amount of effect on your CPU. And then click start. For set timer resolution service, you're gonna to wanna to place this inside of your C drive. So it'll look like this. Just copy and paste, cut and paste, or move it to your C drive. And then we're going to run all of these commands here in CMD. So Windows key R, CMD. If it doesn't show that created with administrative privileges, you can use Control Shift Enter. It'll come to this. And then you're going to paste it using the right click on your mouse. If you already have done this step, it'll show you that you have an error. These values aren't in Windows 7, so they're not going to work for me right now. Even if you use ILSC, still run these three commands right here. In Device Manager, I've created a document which shows what you can disable in Device Manager. The easiest way is going to Devices by Connection. And then looking for these names. For PCI Bridges, if you have the drivers installed, it'll say like PCIe times 16, PCIe times 8. That's the same thing as PCI bridges. So if it shows nothing under it, you can disable it. So these I have disabled because nothing's under it. But this bridge right here has my NVMe under it. So you do not want to disable this. Same goes for my NVIDIA GPU right here under the PCI bridge. If you use ethernet and you have these WAN ports that show up, also disable these. If you have not, enabled any drivers anything that says unknown device with the little yellow arrow next to it like this it's going to show that either something's been disabled it's not working right or the driver hasn't been installed so you can disable that as well only if it says unknown device if it says something like this where an alternate driver may may be providing the functionality don't disable it as you can run into issues disabling usb ports I have this shown in my previous video as well. This is just kind of what a map of what my motherboard looks like. So if you just search up your motherboard in Google and what it looks like in BIOS. So to go into your BIOS, you'll like spam your delete key or F2 when you restart your computer. And it'll show names in BIOS like USB port three, one, two, it's usually under the advanced tab and then like USB configuration, something along those single port control. As long as you don't disable all of them at once, even if you disabled something that your mouse was connected to and you're like, oh crap, just plug the mouse into a different port and change it. Now into registry edits, we're gonna disable full screen and game DVR. So just double click on it, select yes. Same thing for mouse and keyboard reg and the power reg. This disables USB power settings and this reg will change your data queue sizes as well as set the mouse and keyboard settings to the correct values and change the values in the control panel under accessibility if you have that still enabled on your PC. 
we're gonna right click on MSI utility, select run as administrator. So we're going to enable MSI mode for anything that says MSI mode. Now your PCI bridges likely will not show that they're supported with MSI mode, but the one that's with your GPU will most likely still work in MSI mode. And you can check by looking as 010 for location and go into your device manager view devices by connection scroll down to your pci bridge gpu this is my gpu right here right click properties 010 the reason i don't change this is this is what is connected to my ssd you're more likely to blue screen when you change something like that so i just leave that the same now talking about the interrupt priority there's two ways to do this you can either set it to high or leave them as undefined You'll hear it both ways of which way to do it. I honestly can't tell that much of a difference using undefined or high, but I've been trying both. So it's something that you can change between and see which one works better for your system. After we set that, we're gonna go into the interrupt affinity, which is under the Microsoft Corporation interrupt affinity tool. And then you're gonna use the time 64.exe and run this as administrator, so right click, run as administrator. So you can press N for NVIDIA until you find your GPU. And now I have this document here that will show you what to set things as for your GPU, PCI bridge, and then USB, depending on how many cores and processors you have. And you can check this in Task Manager again, underneath the CPU section. So then you're going to select Select Mask, CPU 2, OK. These errors don't mean anything and don't restart the device using this. After you set this for your GPU and USB, we're going to restart our computer before going to the next step. If you don't know again how to figure out what PCI bridge you have or what USB your mouse is connected to, we're once again gonna go into Device Manager, View Devices by Connection, scroll down under the PCI bus, use my USB host controller, right click Properties, 020 and my GPU which is under PCI bridge 010. The next step here I've created a template for IRQs so you're going to right click on this and select edit. If it says run you still want to click that here and then it'll bring you to the edit screen. So we're going to use Windows key R to use run and then type in MS info 32 just going to bring you to this screen select hardware and resources irqs i have this disabled right now but i'm going to show you the picture from my other video when you scroll all the way down you're going to find your irq numbers for your usb and your gpu you're going to want to set your gpu to one and your usb to two so you can just change the number directly in here and then file save exit out of it and then run it the last step directly in this folder is removing old devices. So using devicecleanup.dxe, select all and remove selected. If this does not work, make sure to run it as administrator. So right click, run as admin. So the majority of mouses that are for gaming and some keyboards will have a profile for it where you can set things such as polling rate and debounce time for the lowest input delay. You're going to want to set it to the highest polling rate you can, which is going to be a thousand for most mice. This is going to give you a one millisecond input delay on your mouse. If you have something like debounce time, so it'll likely be something as like 10 milliseconds. This isn't something that you have to change because you'll run into issues of double clicking, but you can set this all the way down to like four milliseconds or all the way up to 16 in my program. Setting this to four milliseconds will allow you to click your mouse at a much faster rate whereas 16 will be more delayed. Putting this to the lowest value will allow your mouse to register clicks way faster, but you are also at a higher risk of getting double clicks when you might not have actually wanted to double click. Turning off any LED lights on your mouse will also help lower your input delay. That's all for this video. Please subscribe if you're not already to stay tuned for future videos that will help you improve your gameplay as well as your system latency. Thank you for watching, peace out.